First off, let me start by saying that I'm a huge fan of Sex and the City franchise and the Carrie Diaries. Sex and the City was the first show I saw that centered around females, their friendships, and of course, romantic relationships. The main character of the show, Carrie Bradshaw, played by Sarah Jessica Parker, really stood out to me. I remember first seeing the show and thinking, wow, she's not that pretty. Now let me explain. Sarah Jessica Parker is an attractive woman, but she isn't the Hollywood standard of beautiful. You know the type, they're usually white, they have proportional small features, thin, mostly blonde. That's what made me relate to Carrie the most. She seemed so real, since she wasn't this exceptional beauty going through men, but a normal looking attractive woman navigating her love life. I love how the show portrays her as beautiful, reinforcing the idea that the Hollywood standards of beauty aren't the only standards to be deemed attractive. This really spoke to me since they don't fit the mainstream beauty standards. We all know people have their own ideas of beauty, but when you don't fit the mainstream standards, you can find yourself in situations where your beauty or your self-worth isn't acknowledged. A great example of this in Sex and the City is Carrie's relationship with Big. The way Big sees Carrie's beauty directly correlates on how he treats her in the early stages of their relationship. The YouTube channel, The Take, does a great in-depth analysis of this topic. In the episode Secret Sex, Carrie dissects why her friend Mike won't publicly acknowledge Libby, a woman he adores in private. She was one of the only women he'd ever met who he felt he could just be with. So what's the problem? Right, look, she's not beautiful. And we don't have a lot in common. And she realizes that she's that embarrassing girl for big. You won't introduce me to your friends. You bring me back to that restaurant where men take women they don't want to be seen with. At the end of the episode, Big dismisses her concerns. I think Feng Wa's is the best Chinese food in the city, so that's why we went there. The uh, guy we met in the street, I couldn't remember his name. But it does seem like Carrie was on to something. The way Mike talks about Libby sounds just like what Big might be thinking about Carrie. But she's warm and unpretentious and... It was the best sex I've ever had in my life. What are you afraid of? What other people are going to think? Look, all I know is that she's not the right woman for me in the larger sense. In part because she's not his ideal woman. He has a certain image in his head of the kind of partner he should have on his arm. And probably others just have a thing for exceptionally beautiful women. Exactly. And there's something wrong with that. And that's why he goes on to marry Natasha. You know, she's shiny hair, style section, Vera Wang, and I'm, you know, the sex column they run next to ads for penile implants. Now, you can interpret this in whatever way you want, but it's always bothered me how he never mentioned her beauty and only focused on how nice exactly. her personality oh, wow. was. I mean, just the line. You just want to be with the one who makes you laugh. She's talking about the beauty of these other women, and he just says, well, at least you have a great personality. Like, what the hell? Also, the actress herself, Sarah Jessica Parker, has been bombarded with a lot of mean comments called the unsexiest woman alive. She's been called a horse multiple times. There's even a website dedicated to this. Look, I'm Mike, and this is Harry. Sarah Jessica Parker. And, you know, it just really tells you how society doesn't respect her beauty because she doesn't fit the mainstream standards of beauty or the Hollywood standards. Now, on the other hand, Fetus Carrie is the conventional beauty. She is that girl that fits the Hollywood mold perfectly. In the show The Carrie Diaries, it's a prequel to Sex and the City. It shows teen Carrie dealing with the death of her mother, teen angst, coming of age, and romantic relationships. Before the CW announced who was going to play Carrie, there were rumors and videos on YouTube on who should play the role. People like Elizabeth Olsen, Miley Cyrus, Selena Gomez were all thought of, and even Blake Lively was slated to play Carrie in the prequel movies. I was surprised when looking back at all these candidates because they didn't have the look of Sarah Jessica Parker. They were all super pretty actresses with some clout. No doubt the producers were looking for that, but they were all conventionally pretty. Of course, the role went to Anna Sophia Robb, and I am a fan of hers. She can really act. Like, you should really see her in Little Fires everywhere. She's great. But her looks on the show bothered me. Anna Sophia Robb's prettiness seemed like another check mark on a conventional teen drama. Teen drama with a super pretty lead? Check. TV shows that shows teens as blemish free, super gorgeous and thin sometimes seem surreal. And sometimes you get tired of how surreal things are and you want something more grounded and real. Now there are people in the world that are naturally gorgeous and conventionally pretty and that's fine. It's just that the film and television industry always highlights them and no one else. There's a bunch of people who are out here looking more like Hilary Swank and MJ Rodriguez than ScarJo, Margot Robbie, or Perry Edwards. 
If you ask me, young people who have the look and the spirit of Carrie, who could possibly play her in the Carrie Diaries, like if they revived it, would be YouTuber Danny Calero or Danny Cimarelli. That's who she is. And this actress might be a bit too pretty, but she kind of has the same features as Sarah Jessica Parker. Her name is Diana Silver. She's a new and upcoming actress. I feel like those two would be great Carries in the Carrie Diaries. The HBO series is the only visual people have when thinking of Carrie Bradshaw. Since Sarah Jessica Parker's unconventional beauty helped the show become relatable, I thought it should have also translated into the teen drama as well. If there was an unconventional attractive female lead in a teen drama, it would have gotten her attention to being out of the norm for television. It would also be beneficial for young viewers of the show. There's so much talk now about unachievable beauty standards, and when young people see someone who looks more like them or more like a normal person like a normal beautiful person someone who's unconventional they'll be able to relate to them more they won't hold themselves to this high crazy standard and get really sad and depressed about the way they look that's it for this video please comment subscribe tell me what you think thank you goodbye